Okay, hello. So today I'm going to be talking about wide binaries. So these are stars that are very far apart, but they're still mutually bound. So here are two stars. They're 7,000 AU apart, and the gravitational attraction between them is very small. So conventional physics states that they should uh, not be bound, and also certainly that they should not be orbiting each other at the speed we see them to be. They orbit each other far too fast, rather like galaxy rotations. Okay, so on the left, there is some data taken from a paper by Hernandez et al. in 2012. So the x-axis shows the separation of the stars, and the y-axis shows the orbital speed of them. Now, according to Newton, for uh, general relativity, we should see something like the red curve. There should be a drop off of the rotational uh, speed, orbital speed, with separation. But the data actually shows that there's no fall off at all, as shown by the black crosses here. The, dis uh, the discrepancy between the two curves always begins in, these, uh, in this data at an acceleration, which is about 2 times 10 to the minus 10 meters per second per second. So at accelerations below that, we see this discrepancy between the two. Um, this is very similar to the behavior of disk galaxies, and this is shown on the right. So with disk galaxies, as you go out to larger radii, the orbital speed should follow the red curve. So it should first rise and then fall. But in fact, it rises and then stays constant, rather like in the wide binaries. And where these two curves separate is at, uh, sure enough, the acceleration 2 times 10 to the minus 10 meters per second per second. OK, so what's going on? So this uh, situation, the wide binary, uh, sis, wide binary system was modeled by my postdoc, Dr. Jesus Lucio, uh, coded up uh, by him based on quantized inertia, um, which is a theory I'm suggesting. So what I'm going to show you is a simulation using three different kinds of physics. The first one in blue blue trajectories with um, using Newton or general relativity, which are equivalent. The second using MOND, which is a rival theory. And the third using quantized inertia. Um, so this, the x-axis is the x-coordinate and the y-axis is y, of course. So we'll see what happens. And what you'll see, just to preempt it, is that Newton and MOND, in these two um, physical models, the stars will separate because the gravity their mutual gravity will be not will not be strong enough to hold them, but with quantized inertia, their inertial mass will reduce because the acceleration is very low because they're very far apart, and so the the centrifugal force pushing them apart will not be strong enough to push them apart, so they will stay together, and you can see this in the simulation. So as you see, Newton and Mond make the stars separate, and quantized inertia keeps them nicely bound. Okay, so the conclusions are that wide binary stars orbit far too fast for Newtonian physics or general relativity. Now, dark matter cannot be added to fix this on small scales because it has to stay spread out um, because um, the, the models, the dark matter models predict that it must stay spread out on galactic scales. Um, but wide binaries show the same behavior as galaxies. So we can conclude from this that the anomalous behavior of galaxies cannot be due to dark matter. The solution can't be MOND either. Because of its external field effect, it produces much the same behavior as Newtonian physics. So the final conclusion is that only quantized inertia predicts wide binaries perfectly and simply. Okay, thanks for your attention. <laughs>